beautiful welcome to my channel in today's video we have a new Anastasia palette to review we're going to be reviewing the new Anastasia Beverly Hills fall romance eyeshadow palette it comes in this beautiful burgundy outer packaging this palette is limited edition for the fall slash holiday season and it launches on September 7th I always get very excited whenever Anastasia releases a palette especially as of late because they've improved their formula they've changed their packaging and I'm quite like everything they've been releasing since they did the rebrand so we shall see if this palette is worth it or not if you guys are excited for today's video don't forget to please give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started one thing I immediately noticed about this palette and I feel like a lot of us did is that it is quite the dramatic looking palette and you guys know I love eyeshadow looks that are nice and wearable not boring I do like to dabble into color but I like to make everything kind of soft glamorous looking ish so my goal for today is to create two looks with this palette and to see if I can achieve those results but first let's open this box and see the actual palette in person because I have not opened the box yet here's what the full romance palette looks like outside of the box the palette has a super soft suede exterior it says it has a 12 month shelf life and it is made in the USA and then let's take a look right here once you open the palette here is the moody color story that you are presented with I cannot wait to swatch these shades but most importantly I can't wait to do eyeshadow looks with this one because I truly am intrigued to see what types of looks we can come up with I feel like majority of what I've seen Anastasia post so far everything looks a bit on the dramatic side it is a limited edition fall slash holiday eyeshadow palette and I feel like this time of year is when we wear the most dramatic makeup look so in that sense it definitely makes sense that they did that but like I said I love making things wearable so I'm excited to see what I can do with this color story I'm checking for information on their website to see what more I can tell you about this one it says the renaissance of luxe glamour and decadence has arrived with a provocative blend of decadent shades featuring 12 seductive jewel tone metallic and rich neutral eyeshadows for ethereal everyday to glam grunge looks and the palette retails for $55 the reason I can do this video before the palette comes out is because I am thankfully part of the Anastasia PR list and so I get my hands on this one and I get to show you looks with it and the swatches before the palette comes to the website with that said if you watch my channel often you know that I will tell you exactly what I think about the makeup no matter if I bought it myself or whether it was sent to me I can't wait any longer let's go ahead and get started with the swatches and one thing I noticed right away with this one is that it has a bit of imbalance when it comes to mattes versus shimmers I usually like my palettes half and half and this one as you can see has 12 shades total and only three of them look to be true matte shades and then there is three more that are almost matte but they're like those types of matte shades that have a bit of a sprinkle of shimmer in there shades like thorn right here see how it has a teeny tiny bit of shimmer mulberry as well and then amber which has a bit more obvious shimmers thrown in there anyways here's the finger swatches of the first four shades which are the shades smoke smoke is described as a metallic silverish taupe that has green and gold reflex moonlight is the next shade this one is a duochrome lavender with a sparkling pink opal shift then we have the shade fireside metallic rosy copper with sparkling reflex and the shade divine right here which is quite intriguing and this one is a duochrome vivid purple with a sparkling pink pearl shift here are the next four shades starting with the shade crown which is a duochrome with sparkling green blue shifts then we have amber which is described as a matte toasted brown with fiery reflex 
First one from the second row is called Leather, and this one is a matte stone shade. Then we have the shade Thorns, which is a matte hunter green with sparkling reflex. Let me build up these last two swatches just a little bit so that you guys can see them better. And then we have the last four shades, which are the grungiest of them all. Starting with Crimson, which is a matte deep wine color. Then we have Midnight, which is a metallic smoky purple with sparkling reflex. Mulberry, which is a matte reddish brown with sparkling reflex. And lastly, the shade Twilight, which is a matte deep grayish green shade. So take a look right here at the swatches of this new palette. At first glance, I'm thinking, did they forget a transition shade? However, however, these formulas are very blendable. So I'm truly hoping that we can lighten up the matte shades so much that they make for good transitions on the crease, even if they can build up to be this dark and intense grungy type shades. So we'll see how that goes, right? <laughs> Take a look right here at the stunning swatches. The swatches definitely look very promising, so let's go ahead and see what I can do with this palette. I'm going to start with a Sigma E28 and the shade Leather up here. And I am going to tap this color on the outer V of the eye. And then once I have a nice amount of pigment there, I'm going to blend it forward. I did my makeup like four hours ago because I was waiting for this palette to get delivered and I did not necessarily prime my eyelids. I did do a little bit of concealer underneath my brows. I'm adding a little bit more of that shade and I am just blending it all throughout my crease area. See, this definitely can be diffused to be a beautiful transition type shade and it's not too dark. Plus, I like that it's a very pretty cool tone shade. The palette, I feel like, just looks kind of scary at first glance, but so far, so good. I'm liking this. I think I'm going to do some day looks that I will then turn into night looks, and that way, instead of two looks, I can give you four looks in this video. Wish me luck with that. <laughs> with my finger, I'm going to grab the shade Crown, which is this beautiful dual chrome shade here, and I'm going to stamp it all throughout the center of the eyelid. Just stamping it in place with my finger here. This is a really pretty gold dual chrome shimmer which has some blue sparkles in there. And then with a flat brush, I'm going to grab the shade Moonlight. This is a Sigma E57 and I'm going to add it to the inner corner of the eye and bring it in through my crease around halfway in. A little bit more crown with my brush because I can't fit my finger all the way to my inner corner. So to blend it in, it's much easier for me to grab it with a brush and I am blending it all the way in. Sigma E24 and a little bit more of that shade leather and I'm going to smoke it all throughout my under eye area here and connect it back here at the end. Let's do a cream eyeliner in the waterline and just like that here is a daytime look that you can create with this new Anastasia palette. We'll go back to this eye look in a second. First let's do daytime look number two over here and then I'll show you how to turn this one into a smokier grungier type of eyeshadow look. I'm grabbing a refer number 15 brush and I'm going into the color thorns this time and this is going to be my transition shade for look number two. This color can definitely be built up to be nice and intense back here but you can also very easily blend it into a beautiful smoky crease shade as you can see right here. I'm going to build it up on the outer corner even more to darken things up a little bit. And this time for the center of the eyelid, I want to go in with the shade Smoke and I'm just going to tap it in with my finger all throughout my lid space here, blending it into the first color. And with a flat brush, I'm going into the shade Fireside this time. And this warmer shimmer is going to be the inner corner color. Keep in mind, I'm also trying to do as many shades as I possibly can to show you them. But that's actually not bad the way those two shades blended. That's very pretty. Back to the shade Thorns with a reference number one this time. And once again, we are smoking it up right under my lash line here. 
Now under this eye, I did an olive eyeliner in the waterline. So take a look right here at the second eyeshadow look with this palette, our second daytime look, I should call it, which I actually am really liking. I'm going to use the new Anastasia mascara to show you what these would look like during the day with some mascara on, and then we'll move on to our nighttime looks. As promised, back with mascara on so that you can see the looks with some mascara. Here's the first daytime look right here. And then this one I think might be my favorite. I just love the greenish vibes that we have on the outer part of this one and how beautifully they contrast with the warmer inner corner. I think out of these two, this is definitely my favorite right here. Maybe if I built this one up a little more, I would like it even better. However, we are going to build it up, but we're going to build it up to make it into nighttime looks so that we can also use the grungier, more pigmented shades in this palette. I want to show you as much as I can in this initial review. So let's get started with this one. And to deepen it up, I want to grab the shade Crimson. This is a Sigma E27 brush, and I'm going to start by stamping it on the outer corner. I'm trying to be careful around the mascara. And then once I have it nice and smoky back here, I'm going to start building it up and in so that we can darken up the entire eye look back here. First, I'm patting the shade in place and then I'm going to start blending the edge. And I'm bringing it in around halfway through my crease and just making sure there's no harsh edges. Back with my E57 and the shade Moonlight, I definitely don't wanna lose Moonlight all the way to half through my eyelid here and just adding that one shade has already changed this look so much and totally made it into a more evening type look however i'm going to keep going i also want to use a dark shimmer shade and i'm debating between moonlight and divine i think i think i might have to do divine right here here's what this one looks like and i want to add it right on the edge of the matte burgundy color blend it into the duochrome color we have on the eyelid so i'm just patting it with my finger back here back with the sigma e27 nothing added i'm just making sure it blends into the matte burgundy and then a little bit more crown on my e57 and we have to make sure we blend well into the shade divine by just running my brush back and forth right where they meet I need a pointed brush and I'm going to use my refer number 26 to grab the color crimson and intensify things right underneath my lower lash line on the outer part back here, making sure it meets with the color crimson right on the outer corner. And so here's my first daytime look turned into a much more dramatic eyeshadow look. I actually really like the effect that the color divine gave the eye right back here and how well it matches with the shade moonlight on the inner corner and the first half of the eyeshadow. I'm still very curious to use the shade Moonlight and we totally could have used it where we used Divine. I'll try and see if I can incorporate it into the second look but I'm not sure if I can. The first thing I want to do to turn this into a nighttime look is darken up the outer corner once again and this time I'm going to do it with the shade Twilight and oh this is dark and this is a refer number one brush i'm just going to start by tapping twilight right on the outer corner twilight is darker than i expected actually i wiped off the brush on a paper towel and i'm going to blend up the color i deposited back here this looks so nice and intense i love it i totally could leave it at this and be very happy with it i love the way this looks but i want to use at least one more shade so i'm going to use the shade mulberry back here i'm thinking right in the middle there let's go for it this is a decision i'm making just for the sake of adding more shades to my eye look we'll see Ooh, wait a minute i like that hold on hold on hold on let's intensify it closer to the outer corner I need a brush. Refer number 13 and I am patting Mulberry right back here. I'm going to blend it into the center shade. And back with the refer number one, I'm making sure to blend it into our outer corner color. I have a little bit of fallout that I'm getting rid of down here. And with a Sigma E30 and a little bit of the shade Twilight, we are going to smoke things up 
right underneath my lower lash line back here. I don't think I've had crazy amounts of fallout or anything like that, but I think ideally I would have loved to use this palette without my makeup done so that I could really clean up underneath the eye because you can definitely see that, you know, there are some things under my eye and I'm not able <laughs> to take them off right away. I'm trying to decide if I can even see Mulberry back here where I put it. You can see it a little bit, but not that much. Anyways, I just wanted to use as many shades as I possibly could. I am really loving this eye look regardless. And this right here is the second daytime look turned into a dark, smoky, nighttime look, and I am loving the results. I think just like for the first two looks, I am really, really liking this look over here more than I do the one over on this side. Even though my eyeshadow looks are completely different from one another, I noticed that I had like shaped them differently and so I'm fixing it over here on this side and I just raised my crease shade a little bit more with some more of the shade leather and my Sigma E28 brush. Take a look, I am back and as you can see, I finished up my makeup looks. I went ahead and put on some lashes so that we could really see the nighttime looks in effect. And I added some lip products to my face. This is the Anastasia Lip Liner in the shade Muted Mauve and the gloss in the shade Dusty Rose right here. And I actually think that this lip combo really complements both of these eye looks. So let me show you one last time the finished eye looks. Now that we even have some lashes on to make things nice and dramatic, take a look right here at nighttime look number one and nighttime look number two right here. I gotta say the combination of cool toned olive green shades with warmer shades is irresistible to me. So at first I like just kind of was going through the motions of using as many shades as possible, but I gotta say I ended up loving the way that this look Came out. When it comes to grungy eyeshadow palette releases from Anastasia, this is not the first time we see a grungy palette like this one. We also have the Rose Metals palette, which came out last year. And this one also has, as you can see, a pretty grungy color story. So I wanted to put them side by side to show you. And I gotta say, when it comes to grungy eyeshadow palettes and grungy color stories, me personally, I much prefer the versatility of the new palette versus the Metal Rose. If you watched my review video on this palette last year when it came out, you know that I wasn't super impressed with the Rose Metals color story. I love the leather packaging, but the color story in and of itself, I wasn't overjoyed by. And so when it comes to grungy eyeshadow palettes, I think that the full romance palette is much better in my opinion because you have a lot more shades to choose from. Plus, you guys know I have a weak spot in my heart for burgundies and I have burgundies in this one. With that said, I don't think that this is going to become my new favorite Anastasia palette. I think that that spot is definitely still held by the Cosmos palette which came out earlier this year. In comparison, as you can see, this palette has a much lighter color story. I love the shimmers of the Cosmos palette a little better. I love the dual chromes of the Cosmos palette a little better. And even the mattes, I find these matte shades that the Cosmos palette has in it to be extremely, extremely flattering on my complexion. Plus, unless I'm specifically wanting to go dark and grungy, I find that this color story right here is much more what I wear on a daily basis. So my favorite Anastasia palette, if anyone's curious, is still the Cosmos palette. However, I can definitely appreciate this color story for the full time because Cosmos is definitely much more of a spring and summer palette in my opinion. I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts on this new full romance palette from Anastasia. I posted a little short video showing you the swatches over on my Instagram account, which if you're not following me on Instagram yet, definitely do so. And I am so happy to see that a lot of you love grungy color stories and are so excited for this palette release. So if that's the case, and this is a color story that you were really looking forward to, I really hope that the looks I created in today's video were helpful. If you are going to shop for the full romance palette from Anastasia, please do so using the links I'm leaving you down below in the description box. Right now, you can sign up for early access to get it from the Anastasia website, but this will also be coming to Sephora and Ulta 
very very soon and I will keep you posted so check the description box for all of the details as per usual you'll also be able to find everything I'm wearing on my face today listed and linked down there I'm not doing side-by-side -side comparisons in today's video because I truly don't think I have any other palette in my collection that has quite this color story I have tons of palettes that have burgundy and pink shades I also have tons of palettes with metallic and duochrome shades that could somehow resemble some shades in this one and I have palettes that have dark grungy olive green shades as well however I don't have any palettes that has all of those different color stories combined in one the way this one does so I do feel like in that sense this palette is a bit more different and a bit more special than what we're seeing so far I do have a couple of concerns that I wanted to mention to you before I wrap up this video and it's the formula of the shimmers I think that I ended up getting a really good result as far as the shimmers were concerned and I pretty much used all of the shimmers except for the shade midnight but I did notice that the shade divine even though it swatches really pretty and it's very pigmented as you can see it feels a bit on the dry side on the pan rather than creamy and in my mind I was expecting it to feel a lot creamier than it does it still performed beautifully it swatches beautifully but I wanted to make you aware of that and I had the same sensation with the shade moonlight up here however that was also a shade that performed pretty good but I just wanted to make you aware that there's a couple of shimmer shades in this palette that feel drier than I was expecting with that said though performance wise I truly had no trouble if you guys liked today's video don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave I tried to give you as much information as I possibly could to help you make the right decision for yourself on whether or not to buy this new Anastasia full romance palette and so if you enjoyed my video and you thought it was helpful please don't leave without subscribing i love you all so much thank you for watching and i hope to see you back in the next one <laughs> bye